India's AVNL is moving forward with the development of new light tanks optimized for high-altitude combat, following lessons from the 2020 Galwan Valley clash with China. After previously exploring a deal with Russia for the Spread SD, the focus has shifted toward advanced Western platforms. In 2023, the Indian Army issued a request for information for 350 light tanks under 25 tons, featuring C-4 ISR systems, 120mm guns, and modular armor. AVNL is now in talks with Belgium's John Cockerill and Israel's Elbit systems to integrate cutting-edge technologies, including anti-drone measures and AI-assisted battlefield systems. This strategic pivot aligns with India's evolving military needs along its northern and western borders, prioritizing mobility, rapid deployment, and enhanced survivability in mountainous terrain. India's DRDO is developing a gun-fired anti-tank guided missile ATGM for the 105mm main gun of the Zorawar light tank, a platform designed jointly by DRDO CVRD and LNT for high-altitude warfare. The indigenous ATGM, compatible with the tank's high-pressure rifled cannon, is expected to penetrate 500mm of armor at 2000 to 2500 meters. DRDO's ARD is also working on replacing the foreign source gun with a locally developed version. Internal trials of the gun and ATGM are set to begin before integration into Zorawar prototypes. This development supports the Atmanurba Bharat initiative and boosts India's strategic autonomy. Zorawar also features advanced protection, amphibious mobility, and cutting-edge targeting systems, aiming to counter armored threats in regions like Ladakh. India recently unveiled a new class of indigenous kamikaze drones, developed by SIRS National Aerospace Laboratories, NAL, marking a major step in defense self-reliance. Powered by a locally developed 30-horsepower Wankel engine, the drones can strike targets up to 1,000 kilometers away, loiter for 9 hours, and carry a 25 kilograms payload. Designed for precision attacks and inspired by recent conflicts like Russia-Ukraine and Israel-Hamas, these drones are capable of swarm deployment and operating in GPS-denied environments using India's NAVC satellite system. NAL Director Dr. Abey Pashilkar described them as game-changing assets. The development aligns with India's push for strategic autonomy, aiming to reduce foreign dependence while enhancing capabilities for modern, electronic warfare scenarios. India has adopted a bold strategic shift by halting crude oil imports from Azerbaijan, once a key supplier, to protest its pro-Pakistan stance, including biased remarks on the Pahalgam attack and support for outdated UN resolutions on Kashmir. In response, India has strengthened defense ties with Armenia and Greece, nations wary of Turkey's growing assertiveness. These new allies are investing heavily in India's defense sector, purchasing systems like Akash and Panaka, and exploring collaborations on BrahMos and advanced tech. Meanwhile, Turkey's Cyper Air Defense System, set to be sold to Pakistan, faces doubts over performance and NATO compatibility. India, equipped with superior capabilities and adopting forward strike strategies like Operation Sindor, is reshaping South Asia's geopolitical landscape, replacing bullets with boycotts and forging new strategic alliances. Bangladesh is facing severe political turmoil, with interim chief advisor Professor Muhammad Yunus accusing India of interference, pushing the nation toward collapse. Following meetings with opposition leaders, Yunus declared the situation akin to war, blaming India for hindering progress. The ban on pro-India Awami League has worsened instability. Opposition parties are demanding justice for the July 2024 uprising and an end to Indian involvement. Critics argue India's influence over key policies and decisions is detrimental. Yunus vowed elections before June 2025 without Indian interference. The interim government now seeks public consensus on key issues. With tensions rising, concerns grow that Bangladesh may pivot toward China or the Islamic bloc, 
positioning India as a political adversary in the region. India has reactivated a rupees 44,000 crore initiative to construct 12 indigenous mine countermeasure vessels, MCMVs, aiming to bolster maritime security amid escalating submarine activities in the Indian Ocean. The Defense Acquisition Council, led by Defense Minister Rajnath Singh, is expected to review the proposal, with tenders to be issued to Indian shipyards following approval. These vessels, equipped with advanced mine detection and neutralization systems, are crucial for safeguarding India's extensive coastline and vital ports. The urgency stems from increased underwater mine threats posed by adversaries, notably China's expanding submarine fleet and Pakistan's acquisition of Yuan-class submarines. With the Navy's current absence of dedicated MCMVs, this project addresses a critical gap in India's maritime defense infrastructure. The Indian Army is progressing with the development of the AK-630M Integrated Mobile Gun System, MGS, following successful initial trials, adapted from the Naval AK-630M Close-In Weapon System. This land-based variant features a 6-barrel 30mm rotary cannon capable of firing up to 5,000 rounds per minute, mounted on a multi-axle military truck for enhanced mobility. The system demonstrated effective target engagement using onboard radar and fire control systems during preliminary evaluations. Subsequent rigorous field trials are planned to assess performance in realistic combat scenarios, focusing on integration with existing air defense networks and resilience against diverse aerial threats, including drones and precision-guided munitions. This initiative aligns with India's broader strategy to modernize its air defense capabilities and bolster self-reliance in defense technology. India is set to enhance its air combat capabilities as the Tejas MK-1A nears final trials for certification with the French-origin ASM hammer missile. Integration efforts began in 2020 and key milestones, including jettison and release tests, were achieved between 2021 and 2022. As of early 2025, Tejas MK-1A has been observed flying with the missile system during ongoing trials, with reports suggesting the MK-1 variant is also nearing integration completion. The hammer or the highly agile modular munition extended range, with a 70-kilometer range and multiple guidance options, such as INS, GPS, IR and laser, offers precision strike and suppression of enemy air defenses capabilities. It can convert unguided bombs into guided munitions, enhancing Tejas's ability to neutralize enemy radars and missile systems from standoff distances. The missile, already in use on Rafale jets, complements other Tejas armaments like Astra and Python 5 missiles. On February 12, 2025, BL and Safran launched a joint venture to manufacture hammer systems in India, supporting the Atmanurbar Bharat initiative. The venture follows a 2024 French co-development offer and underscores India's focus on defense indigenization and enhancing interoperability across platforms like Tejas, Rafale, and Mirage 2000. <laughs> India has reached a significant milestone in indigenous defense technology with the VHFSR, or Very High Frequency, Short Range Radar System entering critical field trials. Developed collaboratively by DRDO, Bard Electronics Limited, BL, and Tata Advanced Systems Limited, TSL, the system is designed to detect stealth aircraft at a range of up to 400 kilometers and simultaneously track 100 targets. This anti-stealth radar leverages gallium nitride transmit-receive modules for high efficiency, power, and reliability. The radar operates in the VHF band enabling detection of stealth aircraft designed to evade higher-frequency radar systems. Its steering capability allows continuous monitoring of critical airspace sectors, enhancing surveillance against low-observable threats, such as potential J-35A stealth fighters. Mounted on Tatra trucks for mobility, the radar is adaptable to diverse terrains and deployable in high-altitude or coastal regions. The ongoing field trials aim to validate detection accuracy, angular resolution, and multi-target tracking performance in real-world conditions. 
The radar's development marks a major achievement in India's pursuit of self-reliance in advanced air defense technologies. It showcases successful public-private collaboration and paves the way for future innovations in electronic warfare and surveillance systems essential to national security. Russia's efforts to promote its fifth-generation stealth fighter, the Sukhoi Su-57E, continue to face setbacks despite persistent marketing campaigns aimed at countries like India, Malaysia, and Algeria. At the Lima 2025 airshow in Malaysia, expectations were high for a public display of the jet. However, only a scale model was exhibited, reigniting doubts about the aircraft's operational readiness and export viability. The Su-57E, developed as Russia's answer to U.S. fighters like the F-22 and F-35, boasts features such as stealth, supermaneuverability, and the R-37M long-range missile. While Russia claimed a foreign operator would field the jet by 2025, speculated to be Algeria, no confirmation has been made. India, once a partner in the now-abandoned FGFA program, was again courted at Aero India 2025 with offers for early Su-57E deliveries, joint manufacturing, and integration into the AMCA program. However, no official response has followed. Meanwhile, Malaysia's long-pending MRCA decision appears unaffected by the Su-57E's absence from the airshow. Despite vocal support from Russian circles, the aircraft's limited domestic deployment and no-show at key events continue to cast doubt on its global competitiveness and production maturity. That's all from YTS Team for now. Hope you liked today's video. Please subscribe our channel for more such videos. Thanks for watching.